Hi everyone, I hope you had a positive week. For those who are new to my channel, welcome to the Pineapple Chicken Block, where I will cover everything positivity, culture and lifestyle. So this week's video is all about motivation and how to get stuff done. I'm not going to lie, I'm trying to make this video probably more for myself, but I do hope that the tips that I share is also useful for you. The reason I'm making this video is because over the winter months, I found it very hard to keep my motivations up. I found it difficult to get out of bed and I also found it really hard to find the energy to focus. I really struggle with the winter periods. I love sunshine and the lack of it has definitely affected my mood. But this can't be the excuse to use to keep things going and to get stuff done. So this is why I want to revisit what is motivation and how we can overcome lack of motivation. So I hope you find the following tips useful. But let's start with the basics. What exactly is motivation? I think it goes without saying that motivation is important. It is the thing that gets you out of bed all the way to starting your own business. But what exactly is motivation? So motivation is the thought process that turns actions towards your goals. So the key words in that sentence is action and goal. So let's start off with goals. I previously made a video about goal setting for success and I really recommend it for this task. I will link it down below and also tag it up there so that you can have watch. Now why goal setting is important is because it will remind you why you need to get up in the morning and that is the start of finding the right motivation for what you want to do. And then the next is action and that is probably the most critical thing of all. How do we get towards our goals and what do we do to get there? But let's be honest, motivation is not always there and I find it very hard to keep it consistent. It is fickle and it likes to run away all the time. I mean, a great example is the Easter weekend, where I spend most of it just eating chocolate and watching YouTube videos, instead of actually recording my own and writing a blog. So why is motivation so hard to find sometimes? We have to understand that it is a thought process and is not always within our control or within our influence. So let's break that down. So it's important to break it down into those three different things. So the circle of control, circle of influence and circle of concern. An example of this is obviously the pandemic is something we're concerned about, but that is not something that we're really in control of, especially of all the different rules and restrictions that we have that are imposed on us by the government, obviously for our safety, but it's not something that we can control. Yes, we should be concerned about and aware of, but we shouldn't let it control us and let us make us worry. Because you'll realize that if you're trying to control things you can't, and that's external to you, then you're just actually reacting to a lot of things. So to use another basic example to illustrate those different circles is currently in England, the gyms are closed. So for those who regularly used to go or really are concerned about their physical health, this is something you would obviously be concerned about. But we also have to recognise it's something that is not in our control. Those are restrictions put by the government and we just can't do very much about it. But when we sit back and assess, we can recognise that there are things that are within our control that we can do, such as doing a home workout or going for a run or cycling, walking, anything just to get out of the house and get some fresh air or just to break a sweat. So though that is a basic example, we can use that on our day-to-day -day tasks and goals. It is actually really liberating because when you sit back and assess and really focus on what you can control, you can just forget about the rest. And that is actually something that I don't do very often. But by being able to do that at the beginning of a week or if you do it monthly or even quarterly, you can kind of sit back and focus on your goals and recognise and list down what is within your control and just let everything else go. So the next thing I want to introduce to you is the idea of systems. Now I already mentioned that willpower and motivation can be very fickle and elusive. So we can't always depend on that. But however, using routine and building habits, it means that we can be less dependent on our motivation 
especially when it's not there in the winter periods, like for me. So I want to introduce, by building systems and building good habits, we can be less dependent on motivation. So the first one I want to introduce to you is MITs. So have you had times where you want to feel motivated and you want to get going and you write down a list of things you want to do? But that list grows bigger and bigger and all the tasks just seem even more daunting, even if some of them are super simple. I did that a few weeks back and I was listing down all the things I needed to do, personal, work, physical, all those type of things. And I just started staring at my list and think, I'm not doing any of this. I probably ended up actually just crawling on the so um, crawling into bed and watching YouTube because I just didn't want to deal with it. But then I read an article about MITs, and that stands for most important tasks. And it turns out it's used really regularly in the design world, but clearly it didn't make it to the corporate world where I've been. The idea is really, really simple. It is just to break up your day at the beginning of your day write three to four tasks that you want to achieve. And if you achieve those four tasks, you will feel accomplished on the day and you'll be happy. So if someone interrupted it or it just ended in, ended early um, or you just didn't feel like doing any more, by doing those few tasks that's on your list, those three to four, you just feel a sense of accomplishment and you can keep doing that day after day after day. So then you become less reliant on your motivation because it's all there, it's all written in front of you. Those are just the tasks you need to do and it's bite-sized and it's easy to digest. So I really recommend writing it on a post-it note or I recommend the um, notebook that one of my friends has made. So I've put it in the link below, but it is a great notebook where it lists out what you want to achieve for the day, how you felt at the end and makes you think about your priorities for the next day. So do check it out if you think that might be useful for you. So protecting your time. I'm absolutely rubbish at this and I'm trying to get better, but I do get FOMO. I like going out. I like seeing my sister. I like watching YouTube and Netflix and not do very much. But I need to recognise that a lot of it is not protecting my time and using it for things that I shouldn't really be using it for. Or getting um, dragged by other friends to do other things or I want to see family because they're doing something. I get distracted very, very easily. So this is when the calendar in your phone and or the Outlook and your work calendar is super important. So now that you've recognised the task you need to do for the day, so your MITs, you've got it in front of you, you need to block out time in your calendar for it. So for in my work calendar, if I know that there are certain tasks that I need to complete for a big project, I block out time. And I say, focus time, task X. And for most people, and most of my colleagues, they really respect that. They try not to book um, meetings over it, unless it's very urgent and have to. But by doing that, what you're trying to do is protecting your time and letting other people know that, look, Please respect it. I really need that focus time to do things. And on the weekends, I do that on my personal calendar. I find that if I don't do it, my weekends just run away from me and I get distracted. I'm just, I'm just not doing anything productive. So by knowing what I want to do, the tasks that I set myself for the day and then blocking it into times in my calendar, it just holds me a little bit more accountable because I'm looking at it. I'm thinking, oh gosh, I really need to do it. And if I don't, it just, there's a little bit of guilt there, um, but it just makes me realize that, look, you just need to do something. It's, it's on your phone, it's on the screen, just do it. So the next tip I have for you is to let go of the guilt. Guilt is not a sustainable motivator, so please don't use it. For example, over the Easter weekend, I had an indulgent one where I ate a lot of chocolate and had a lot of Easter eggs. But does that mean that I need to feel guilty and starve myself the next day or the following few weeks to try and break that cycle of unhealthy eating? No, absolutely not. Do not use guilt as a motivator. You need to let go of the guilt and have the confidence in your own ability to get yourself back on track towards your goal. So stop it, stop feeling guilty, let it go, revisit your goals, write down your MITs, 
protect your time and keep going. So now that you've done all the hard work, you've revisited your goals, you're writing your tasks down and you're protecting your time to do them, you set up all the systems that you need, then the next thing is do not break the chain. Consistency is absolutely the key, unlike my YouTube postings, which I hope to change, but it is so important to keep at it day by day. Yes, you'll slip up from time to time, but remember, do not feel guilty, let go of the guilt, get back on track, feel confident in yourself that you are enough, that you can do it. So I wish you the best of luck with all the goals that you have, and I hope that you found these few tips useful in ignoring your motivation and actually building the right systems to get to where you want to be. As always, I would love to hear from you. Please like, leave me a comment down below on the tips you found useful or any other tips that you can share with the community. So if you liked the video, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing to my channel. Until next week, the sweet and sour love.